Hi, I'm Kim the Librarian. Welcome to part two of our research process video. The early searching phase for most people is the phase when you're Googling your topic, maybe reading the Wikipedia entry and trying to get a sense of what angle or aspect of your topic is the most interesting to you. This phase is also commonly known as the panic phase of research because students who are unprepared for this process will often put their initial topic into a search, find way too much information, get overwhelmed, freak out, and change their topic. All it means is that it's time to refine your topic, focus it appropriately to the level of research you're doing, and then we can push forward. That's what the early searching phase is for. In my case, as I begin Googling sushi, I suddenly remember this experience I had at the Boise Co-op recently when I went in to get some ahi tuna and the guy at the fish counter said they were out. And when I asked why they were out, he just shrugged and said, fishing. All of a sudden, I remembered that there's this whole interconnected system that makes it possible for me to eat sushi when I live 500 miles from the ocean and don't know how to fish. So if I wanna talk about sushi, I have a whole array of possibilities. I can talk about the fishing industry. I can talk about overfishing and climate change and warming seas and all the other things that go into whether or not that ahi tuna makes it to my plate. As I narrow down my sushi topic, I decide that I wanna focus on the impact of modern fishing practices on populations of yellowfin tuna. So now I've gone from a topic that was just, oh, I like this kind of food, to something that's a really interesting and legitimate academic research topic. My next step is to start my research on my refined topic. Now I'm ready to go. I have a focused topic. I know what I wanna look for. I have a lot to learn, but I have search terms that are gonna help me find the right level of information that won't be overwhelming. This is the phase where I'm going to use every tool available to find a variety of high quality information on my topic. I'm going to search Google and look for the most authoritative websites. Maybe there's a national fishing association that tracks yellowfin tuna populations or a government website that regulates fishing practices. From there, I'm going to dive into the library's scholarly resources, looking for books on the history of the fishing industry and then articles about the impact of various fishing practices on yellowfin tuna populations. As I locate sources that seem to fit my needs, I'm going to evaluate them carefully to determine that the information is reliable and the author, either person or organization, is a credible and expert source. Of course, as I get deeper into the research, my interest in my topic may change too. So I might go back and refocus and decide to take a slightly different angle on my topic than I expected. That's totally normal and typical in any research process. We have made it, my friends, to the final step of the research process, the final product. This is where you take all of the information that you've gathered and everything you've learned and make meaning out of it to share with others. Now, just because you're working on a final product doesn't mean you're done with all the other steps. It's very common that as you begin to write your paper or work on your presentation, you'll find gaps in the information that you've gathered. And then you'll need to go back to the circle, conduct more research, and possibly even refine your topic further to locate that information. And then of course, as you're writing or creating your presentation, you'll want to keep revising and improving that product as you move forward. The research process is circular and iterative because that's how learning works. And the more you allow this process to happen naturally, the better your final product will become. Of course, this process can't go on forever. You have a deadline and you have to get this project in on time. So you'll do as much as you can with the time that you're given and make it as strong as possible. And then you will submit it and you'll be done and you'll celebrate and be happy that you gave it your all. Thanks for listening to this video. I hope it helped you understand what the research process really looks like in practice. It can be a little messy, it can be frustrating, and it doesn't run in a straight line. But the good news is that there's people like myself and the other librarians at CWI who are here and ready to help you anytime. Please feel free to reach out if we can help you at any point in the research process.